I've done anything to make you think I feel that way about you, I apologize. This might be a little forward, but do you have a bomb strapped to your chest? advocates continue to work hard to end the abuses and conflicts at the root of the global refugee crisis. It's not enough for us to only condemn rights abuses when they fit neatly into our political narratives. It's time for us to put people before politics and unite on issues pertaining to freedom, justice, and equality. Nazanin, welcome. We're delighted to have you here. We're very proud of what you've accomplished. Um, you know, I was thinking that you and I have uh, something in common. The Iranian Revolution changed the direction of both of our lives, which is probably why we both care deeply about the cause of freedom because we want everybody else in the world to have the same choices and opportunities that we've had. I want to hear from you as to, as to what this moment of history meant to you and did for you. Well, thank you, Golly, uh, and thank you to Freedom House. This is a real, real pr privilege for me. I was born in the aftermath of the Iranian Revolution in 1979, and it was a time when the rights, uh, people's rights, uh, political rights, social and legal rights were quickly diminishing. And when I was 20 days old, before any harm came to my father, we managed to escape. And I grew up in London. From early on in my life, I never took any of my freedoms for granted. And when I was 12 or 13, uh, I went to Iran with my mother and uh, we visited Mashhad and Tehran and Rasht in northern Iran and my privilege became so glaringly obvious. I was raised in a country where freedom of speech existed, freedom of assembly, women were, were equal to men before the law, uh, child marriage and child labor, labor were illegal. I got to choose if I wanted to wear the hijab or not. And that wasn't the case in Iran. When I, what I saw was uh, people who wanted freedom and really worked hard every day to gain those freedoms. And when I went back to London, I wanted to lend my voice in any way I could to, to amplify theirs. And, and it really just became a, a, a huge uh, goal in my life to, to see that freedom prevail. Nazanin, Freedom House called 2019 the year of protest, and we are certainly seeing the sentiment continue in 2020 with the civil rights protests in the United States, in Hong Kong, and in Iran. Do you think these protests are going to have a lasting effect? I hope so. You know, I, I recently saw a video of a man in Idlib, an artist in Idlib, Syria, who was standing amid the ruins, uh, amidst the ruins of, of Idlib. And there was a, a lone wall, crumbled wall standing on which he drew, a painted a mural of George Floyd. And it was so inspiring to me that this man who, was standing in these ruins and had suf suffered, he and his people had suffered such grave injustices and suffered so much while the world frankly turned away from their suffering, had the empathy in his heart that extended beyond his borders. His empathy was limitless. It wasn't confined by his borders or just for his people. He wasn't saying, yes, but what about us? He was saying, we share your suffering because essentially an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And my goodness, I walked away from that thinking, we all want to say, yes, but what about us? Whereas what we should be saying is, we are all in this together. And 
<laughs> excuse me if I get emotional, but that is in essence what advocacy is about, is if we stand for George Floyd, which we must, we stand for the rights of George Floyd and every person who suffers police brutality in the United States, we cannot ignore Puya Bakhtiari, who, who was shot to death in the protests in Iran in November 2019, or the people suffering in Syria or Yemen, um, or the injustices in Hong Kong, um, Lebanon and beyond. And when you call yourself a human rights advocate, it's all inclusive. You know, Nazarene, watching you um, talk um, sort of reminds me of the special relationship that artists have with freedom of expression. What, what are your thoughts on that? How do you feel about that? Since time immemorial, there, there's been a, um, a sort of a synergy between arts and, and advocacy. Uh, and I hope they continue. I think it's very important that we, we keep raising our voices um, and that we're not cowered into silence. But there's inherent risk to advocacy that we have to take on because there are people in this world who want to hold on to the status quo of um, silencing people and, and taking away people's freedoms and rights um, and oppressing society. And I think with that comes a huge responsibility for those of us who have a microphone in our hands to, uh, to, to speak truth to power.